This is Codex, a project management tool that transforms your project into a deck builder game. There's just something so satisfying about grabbing this card, picking it up, and putting it into this done pile. I first heard about this from a comment on one of my previous YouTube videos. Thank you, Zack Attack, for that. I decided to give it a try, and I have been blown away by how fun this is to use. I want to show you how I've taken my software development process and applied it to this tool. Let's take a look. So here's the main screen that you'll be looking at when you're using Codex. You can see it's the hand tab. So these are the current cards that you have in your hand to play with. So these are the things that I'm working on right now. I not only have my software development project in here, but I also have my YouTube production uh, schedule in here as well. So that's why you're seeing things like film talking head, film b-roll, that sort of a thing. I love that I can have both of these projects kind of live in the same place because they depend on each other. So these are the things that I'm working on this week, uh, getting this YouTube video created. Uh, let's look over the, uh, the Dex tab. This is where you're going to have all the different cards that you are creating inside of Codex. And a card is just a task, something that you're trying to get done in your project. So as you can see, I've got a code deck. These are all of the different tasks that I need to do uh, code-wise for my gamified task manager that I'm building. You can see I have different uh, ways of sorting these cards and seeing them. Right now, I've got them uh, uh, sorted based on the, their priority, but you can also do milestones. Milestones is a great feature. This is what allows you to be able to add time-based uh, things to your, to your project. These are how I'm organizing things into sprints, like I talked about in my previous video. A sprint for me right now is actually a one-week period. Uh, normally, they're about a two-week period. I'm doing one-week sprints every other week. And then the week that I'm not doing sprints, I'm working on YouTube videos. That's why uh, I have all of these things in the same Codex project. So you've got cards that you can create in these different decks. And Codex, when I first started, it gave me a bunch of these decks to start with because Codex is really focused on game development. So it gave me like code, the art, the design, uh, bugs and stuff like that, music and sound, things that you would all need in a game development project. Another thing that I do as part of my software development process is I do a refinement, a backlog refinement, so to speak. And these decks kind of serve as your backlog of items that you need to get done. So I'll go into one of these decks and go, okay, looking at these items, what are the next things that I want to work on in the next sprint? So let's say I want to work on establishing standard CSS variables in my game. What you can do is you can go and you can edit. The first line of a card will end up being its title and then you can add details uh, to the card so you can know what you need to do. So what's great about this is that it's all done with Markdown. I love writing in Markdown. It's a very easy way to format text. And what's great about this is I can use the, the GitHub style of Markdown to create like check boxes so I can create tasks for myself within this card. So for this, I need to do, let's say I need to do colors and I need to do padding and margin. You get the idea here. I can add a bunch of these to do's and I can save. And then it shows up as these check boxes then I can check them off. Each of these cards have different properties that you can set. Um, I can be set as the owner of this card, so this card will show up. Um, there's a view that you can see all the cards that are assigned to you. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now because I like to have only the ones that are actively being worked on to be assigned to me. You can have different priorities, and what's cool about these priorities is they're by default they're set to be like medium, high, low you can go in the settings and actually customize these to be what you want. So I've customized mine to say like, I want this to be a core feature, or this is just an enhancement, or this is just a nice to have. That way I can tell what are the, what are the core things that I want to include in my app, in my project. 
Then you can also uh, assign an effort. So these are like story points in Scrum and Agile. And you can change the scale of these as well in the settings for your project. I kept the, the Fibonacci numbers because that's what I'm used to working with in my day job. And you can kind of think of these as um, in the context of like gamifying things, you could kind of think of these as like points that the cards are worth when you play them. And then you can assign it to a milestone or a sprint. And uh, you can also set tags if you want to be able to filter things differently. So like I have a tag for like back end and front end bug. Excalibur is the uh, game engine that I'm using. So I have, if, if there's things specific to Excalibur that I want uh, to work on, or like I want to categorize this specific to Excalibur, I can. Research. PicSquare is the pixel art program that I've been using recently. You can also save, like if you set up a card, you can basically save it as a template. You can save it as a preset. So these are all the different properties that you can do. You can uh, attach things to cards. You can have conversations, so if you're working on things as a team, you can have different conversations. You can uh, view with the card history. There's also, you can add subcards to cards, and when you do that, the card becomes a hero card, is what they call it. You can put a card into progress using the, this play button. You can mark it as blocked. You can mark that it needs to be reviewed, and then the check mark is, the, is to mark it off as done. So I'll go through, uh, during my backlog refinement, I'll go through cards and fill out all these, all this information about them. And uh, then when it's time to actually work on a sprint, I'll create, I have created a few of these milestones. The milestone that I'm working on right now is a review for this, for this very program. So that's a milestone. And the next milestone for me, the next sprint that I'm actually going to be working on code for is sprint eight. If I click on that, well, first of all, you can add a, a milestone over for this. You can add a card to the milestone using this button down here. These are the things that are set up in the next, for the, my next sprint. So this was a card that, uh, that I put into progress because it was something that I was working on in the previous sprint, sprint didn't quite get it done. Um, it's now been not worked on for a while, so it's snoozing. Uh, this is another one that I have in progress that carried over from a previous sprint. And then these are the new ones that I have coming up in this sprint. What's great is that you can, on the hand, you can pin a milestone. So whatever milestone you're currently working on, you can pin it. Uh, you just do that by clicking this little pin icon on the milestone. And in your hand, I can now have, okay, these are the, this is the milestone. So these are the things that I need to pull from to put into my hand. And in order to put a card into your hand, you simply grab whichever one you want. So let's see, that's already in my hand. So polished edit, I can just drag it up into my hand. And now this is something that I am working on. You can set the number of cards that you are allowed to have in your hand. You can, that's just another setting that you can, can, you can do. Once I'm done with a card, so let's actually put this one in progress because I'm working on that right now. And this card is part of a hero card. That's what a hero card looks like here. Let's just look at that really fast. And you can look at the sub cards. Oh, and what's really awesome too, um, in my YouTube production deck, this is another awesome feature that you can do. You can create a journey. So this, this is a hero card, it has sub cards, and then you can basically create a hero's journey for your card. What that is, is these are the sub cards, like standard sub cards that you can create for the hero cards in, in this deck. So I have a certain process that I follow when I'm creating my YouTube videos, and so I have a journey for that. So when I, I have a deck for my YouTube ideas. When I'm ready to work on the next idea, I can drag this into my YouTube production deck. And then here I can go into it and I can press this button. I can say start journey. And when I do that, it'll create all the sub cards that are in that journey that I've prepared. It will create all those sub cards for me and I can start working on them. Um, I'm not going to do it now because I'm not, I'm not ready to work on this yet. So I'll actually move that card back. 
Okay, so going back to the hand, it, it, there's just something so satisfying about grabbing this card, picking it up, and putting it into this done pile. It feels like I'm playing a card and uh, that card is now done and I get the points. Whatever effort points that I put on it, I get those points. So this whole thing is just, it's so much fun to be able to think of your project as if you're playing like this deck builder game. And uh, what's cool is at the end of a milestone, you can click on a milestone and see it's kind of small, but as you can, you can see that little like hammer icon that has the nine next to it, that's how many uh, points that I got completed in that last milestone. So I got nine points, um, which wasn't as many as my previous sprint where I got 14 points. It also says how many cards were completed um, and at what priority they had. What I love most about this, not only does it make it fun to do your project this way, to think of it as a deck builder, but also there's just not a lot of extra bloat. You know, when you look at a card, there's really not like so much information. You can, you can do checklists, you can add tags and stuff like that, but when you go to this properties, like there's not an enormous amount of extra bloat. Uh, previous softwares that I've used, there's just a bunch of extra features that I don't really want or, or will ever need, you know, use. So I love that this is very lightweight. There's all different sorts of metrics that it shows you. I haven't really dove too far into these yet. Um, I need to do a little bit more work on understanding what these charts are telling me. But you've got metrics and you've got different ways of ordering your cards. It's just, it's so much fun and it's so easy, simple to use, and I highly recommend it for people working on solo dev projects or even as a small team. It makes it so much fun and I just, I'm blown away. I, I love this, this is so much fun. If you'd like to see more information about my software development process, you can check out this video here. Thank you so much for watching.